Okay, today we're going to try changing the main board on the Simmer X8C or the X8W, same board. Okay, first things first, you need to remove screws from the bottom and the little plates. Take them off. Remove these four screws. Connect those and the top comes off. Don't need that for now. Okay, so the problem with my one is the main flight controller board is shorting out, and when you apply power, this motor spins even when it's switched off. Bought a new board. Replace or try to replace with. Okay. First things first, we need to snip these wires. Okay, I'm going to cut these quite short so we still have plenty of wire to solder onto the new board. There we go. Now each one to make it easier, you can disconnect each motor just by popping that out of the back. That slides out, and we'll have each wire ready to go on the new board. You don't have to worry about which wire is which, because there's only two wires, and it'll work out fine. So do that for all four motors. Remember which motor goes where, black and red, bottom right, that's the one which we had to fall to it. Okay, I've already disconnected the lights, which are just these little plugs. The other thing to remove is the on-off switch and the plug connection down here. And my board comes with a replacement one, not all boards do. This one does. One screwdriver. It's just two screws hold that board in place down there. down there will just slide out. Okay, time to remove the main board. The smaller screwdriver. Four screws. One, two, three, four. The screws somewhere safe so you have quite small. Now remember to make note of the direction of the board. It's the front of the quadcopter, the radio receiver wire is at the front, and the transistors at the back. Very important to get the right way around when you put it back in. Just slide out. First things first, strip the wires. I don't think we need a lot of wire. Maybe just a small bit like that to go through the board, maybe a little bit more. Okay. 
doing that with all four wires. There's our new board. Now, this board comes for holes pre-soldered. So I'm hoping just melt the solder, dip the wires in, top them. So I'm going to tin these wires. Tinning is placing a little bit of solder on the end of the wires just to keep it all together. And uh, it just helps. Okay. And we don't want to make the wires too thick to fit through the hole. I don't find too much solder. Just gonna just a small coat. There we go. First first one's always the worst. Right, so now we need to try and attach these wires to these. So, do one wire first, the negative. We're going to try and heat that solder up and slide it into there. Easier said than done. I imagine, but we'll try it. Make sure we don't touch any components. extra solder in a minute just to make sure uh, nice connections okay yeah, well that went a bit better than expected so we're gonna add a tiny dab of solder those off and this is probably where it goes wrong and it falls away and breaks and all sorts and ruin the board. But let's try it. Okay, that's fine. Just because we want a nice connection. Done. So now we're just going to turn the board over, check the back and double check all wires are soldered positive and negative right around. Okay, and the power lead went through those two holes there. So it should do the same going back. Hopefully. There we go. And so so you want one of these Tiny screws in place. A little bit fiddly. Now you don't want to screw all four down fully. Just want to lightly put them in place and then move between all four to get them and tighten them up slowly. Put the red block on first. If it didn't come with one, like mine didn't, you will need to put that on first. Otherwise you won't be able to reach the on-off switch from the outside. Okay, so we'll try again. Just line it up and slide it in. That is a bit tricky. It would be easier to remove that base plate first, but I'm lazy. 
we go. So it's not to bend the pins. Okay, I'm going to apply those two screws for flat heads just to hold that in place. This is where it could go fiddly if they fall off the screwdriver. Slight issue with the wires not stretching further enough. It's going to be a tight squeeze. No, we didn't get much wire off him, so it should be fine. There we go. Now it's just a matter of sliding each motor back in, trying to remember which one was where. I believe it's the front of the board. So this one was down at the bottom here. Slides in there, turn it over and connect it up. Do that for all four motors. Remember what order they were in. Okay, final part now. This is a nerve wracking bit where we plug up the power supply, see what happens. Now the power switch is off at the bottom, just double check. So it should do nothing. But if we got the wires wrong, it might spark up or go back, so let's find out. It did nothing, so that's good. Let's try switching the power switch, see what happens. Looks good. Now the issue I had before was this motor was spinning all the time, no matter what. So, hopefully... Okay. Try again. All motors spinning. Whether we've got spinning the right way is another question. <laughs> Hopefully we have. If they are the wrong way around, let's recalibrate the board for the accelerometers. If they're spinning the wrong way around, it's just a matter of swapping motors over. This one for that one, and that one for that one. And that's it. We'll put it back together and see how it goes.